Hey everyone, it's Chaz here. Uh, today we're going to talk about <clears throat> one of my favorite methods of getting um, Google My Business listings verified in cities that you don't actually have offices in. Um, <clears throat> it's fairly a black hat method. Um, you can use it to spam. It, it works about, I'd say about two thirds of the time you have success with it. And it's very easy cost you about a dollar eighty cents each method so you know if you do a hundred of them and only 66 of them succeed it's, it's not a huge investment um, <clears throat> saying that hopefully you don't spread it around too much uh, and let's dive into it my favorite method is United States Postal Service change of address uh, you actually have to go to moversguide.usps.com and then you want to get to this page here, official change of address page. Um, and you're like, well, I tried this before and I didn't have a, uh, I, I, I didn't, it asked me for a credit card and I, and I didn't have a credit card with that billing address and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm going to show you the, the hack that makes this work every time. Um, and it's all about the address that you select in the city that you're targeting. So what you need to do, you can't just find any address, okay? So ov obviously we know when we're trying to find these fake addresses, we go to like Zillow and we find something that's for lease there in, in, in our target city or, you know, our target location. Well, you can't just do that. You have to take it a step further. <clears throat> you have to actually select a commercial building that has its kind of own existence and rents to multiple other businesses with inside of it. Okay, so I'm going to show you two examples here of exactly what I mean in two different cities. These are the type of buildings you need to use when you do this. Okay, so here's one in Hanover. It's the, the Square Commercial Center, Hanover, PA. You can see it actually, ha it actually has its own knowledge graph. Like it's, it's um, an office space building. It has tons of offices. This building will work every time if you're trying to get a listing in Hanover. Um, using this method. Here's one in Pittsburgh, uh, the Diamond Building. Again, big building, tons of, it doesn't actually have its, I bet you if I put the, it might actually pull up a, a knowledge graph for it. Uh, maybe not. All right, I thought it did at one point, but anyway, it's still a building by itself, so it actually has the diamond building, right? It's its own building. And then inside of it has lots of units that they rent to businesses. That is what type of business, what you need to use for your address. All right. Once you have a building like that in your target city and you have to find it. Um, so one way you can do it is literally start zooming in on the maps and you'll start seeing something like this diamond building, right? You see something like this. That's what you're looking for. Right, so you start zooming in, you find these buildings that actually have their own little name. They're in every major city has them. Um, there's other ones in here too. So you have one PNC Plaza. Again, that would work. That's the type of buildings you're looking for, those huge commercial office spaces, right? You can't just get... Um, a single commercial center that, that doesn't have lots of units on it. That does not work with this method. Saying that, how do you determine what unit number to use? And can you use just any unit number? The answer is, for the first step with the United States Postal Service, yes, you can absolutely use any unit number, whether it's a real unit in that building or not, to do this, to do a change of address. What's going to happen, though, is if you use a fake unit that does not actually exist in that building and the post office doesn't actually have like a, like there's not a record of that, more likely than not, your Google listing will be immediately suspended after it's verified. So keep that in mind. Using this method, you got to find a big commercial building and you have to use a unit number that actually exists in that building. Okay, so you and you just literally start Googling these and then putting units numbers in behind them or suite numbers and see what comes up. Obviously, you don't want to 
you don't want to run a file of um, uh, of possum, so you don't want to choose something where there's other um, businesses in your category or niche. You, you don't want to choose something that has their own, you know, like if you start uh, Googling different unit numbers and you find like they have a whole brand build out around it, you probably don't want to choose that one. Choose one, choose a, choose a unit number that really has, you know, you might see like 10 different type of businesses that that's been there. And most likely most of those are closed, right? And there's really not an, a consistent brand around that. That's what you choose. Once you choose that, you go over to official USPS change of address. Continue. I'm going to, you're going to do a, a permanent move. You're going to just put any date in here. Business. Select continue. I already have this filled out. It probably, um, probably saved it. And see, I used uh, just, obviously, I'm not actually going to do this, but I'm just showing you that this does give you the ability to use a credit card that you control, that you control the address on. So it doesn't have to be a credit card associated with this fake address, which that's where most people fail. Right? So you can see, enter your old address. This is that one I showed you in Hanover, 1 Center Square, Suite 100. Obviously, you don't want to use that because I actually have a business in this one. And I have a brand built out around this. And you probably will not outrank me if you use it. Um, new address. You can do anything. Your house, your mom's house, your brother's house, any house you want to do, here it is. Just put your new address in. As long as you have a credit card that has this as their billing address, right? So you're most likely your house or a family member's house. Um, one other thing here, I, I'm careful of using this too many times because I don't want the USPS getting wise somehow and be like, man, why are all these change of addresses coming through? Change this stuff up, right? Even this, I have credit cards in multiple addresses um, just between businesses and other th family members I can use, etc. You know, I have a huge family, so I can grab a, if if I need a credit card and an address, I change this up too, just so it's not like, you know, I don't have a hundred businesses getting their mail forwarded to one of these addresses. Keep it safe, keep it looking natural. Just put continue. You're going to see what happens here. This is where they make you verify. And you can see, it gives you, you can even enter a different address here. Right? So you have, it gives you three options now instead of one. Normally, it would have only given you this ad, this option to have your billing address at. And obviously, if it's a fake business, you know, if I'm opening a business in Los Angeles and I only had an option to have my billing address at Los Angeles, I just, it just stopped me. I can't do it. But using this method I just showed you, I now have the option to use this address where I actually do have credit cards. I can even enter a completely different address where I have credit cards billing uh, with. So you just continue it. It's going to take you to a page where it asks you to pay. It's like a dollar eighty cents. You just pay within like five or seven days. Your mail will be forwarded. Then you wait. I usually wait about a week after this is done. Then I go and claim my Google listing for that address. Simple as that. This is the method that you use. All right now, I could have chose anything here. I could go back just to let you show I can, and it does work. Go back. Building address there. I go back can enter a completely different billing address, right? Look at that. Simple as that. That's how you get these listings. Um, and like I said, using this method works about, for me, about 66% of the time. I think a lot of the times it fails is one, the cards don't forward from Google, um, or maybe it's like the change of address, maybe USPS the card gets thrown away or something, 
or and every now and then I, I actually do choose like a a unit number that I thought existed but didn't. Um, and for some reason that gets suspended immediately. But I get about 66% success rate with this for a dollar eighty cents each time or something like that. A dollar uh, I don't know. Um how much is it? Let's look. One dollar. One dollar. Not a dollar eighty, one dollar. Very easy. That's all it is. Have any questions? Uh let me know. Hit, send me a PM. But this is this is one of the secret weapons. If you're gonna gonna do any type of lead gen using maps, this should be one of probably your go-to method because it's easy, it's fast, um, and it's not super spammy either, right? Google will never know because Google doesn't know that you change the address with USPS. They have no clue. Uh, so. It's a very safe method as well. So thanks for watching. Any questions, let me know. Thanks.